an executive discuss, we shall be unveiling a man who believes so much in the promotion of the science, technology, engineering and mathematics education that's talking about STEM education. For him, it is the only way to go for the survival of this nation. He is the Enyabia. He is the founder and chancellor of the Gregory University Uturu in Abu State. I'm talking of none other than Professor Gregory Ikechuku Ibe Oefar. Hello, sir. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome to my room. Sit down, please. Thank you so much, sir. For the purpose of this discussion, because you're a man whose um, credentials can be intimidating, tell us about your early years. Tell us about yourself. Where were you born? Where did you spend your early years? What schools you attended? This is a very tough question. Uh, I was born in Kaduna. My father lived in Kaduna for 27 years. And. Um, between the time I was born in 63, December 10, and then heading back home because of uh, the trouble in the north that led the community to Biafra. So I was two years old. You can imagine the turmoil. So as a little child, I was denied childhood all my life until we were five, five years plus when the war ended. So when you talk about childhood, I have no childhood. Rather, I grew up in, inside the forest, uh, being dropped by mommy, and then until God saved all of us. Without God, there wouldn't have been here. So, and then it was my school at a time. We tried to be in Enugu after the war, so we schooled in Enugu. And uh, with a high level of timidity, meeting people that grew up in the town or saw town. So I developed myself, my own personal skills, because Nobody wanted uh, a bush boy to come mm. up to the town, so you don't play with their toys. So I was dealt with, and but my father, unfortunately, was not fighting for me. So he always tell me that uh, as they continue to beat you up, they will put strength into you. Mm. And then one day that he will be around in the house and he will watch me uh, days the rest because he has no power, money to withstand the big men children. So true to that, and then I became what I call a tyrant. So I grew up in a <laughs> and uh, decided to adopt uh, a loan game. I became a, a weightlifter. So oh. I developed those skills myself and to face the challenges of the world. And uh, because we were in one room till my mother and my siblings joined us in Enugu. So we were selling a car on the streets. We were managing, we were changing schools from here and there. So I was doing commercial children uh, uh, tendering. I was also polishing uh, shoes, uh, berets in police college in Ugu. And then 
making ends meet, selling bread every time. So that's how I started my life until um, <laughs> it's quite unfortunate that when a central state was created, I mean, uh, Imo State was created out of a central state, we had gone back to Imo State. And one of the days I visited Enugu, I saw that all my mates or people I used to beat are, are telling me, which school are you? So they were schooling in CIC Enugu. Okay. Luckily for me, I was schooling in a City Institute of Commerce, a commercial school. Uh, so it, it bears the same CIC. So I mm. said I'm also in CIC, in CIC you know, where? So they, say, so they have branch there, I, I claim, but I had pain in my heart. Mm. So by the time I got to where I changed and took entrance back again, I was already going to uh, the commercial education three. So I learned accounting, bookkeeping, okay. I, I learned shorthand, <laughs> I learned those skills in commercial education. Hmm. So I went to a comprehensive school. When I arrived there, I was looking at my seniors, but I had more better attitude to bookkeeping, uh, uh, um, statistics, and accounting and uh, um, and the shorthand. Okay. So the way I was copying lectures from teacher was completely different. Different. So okay. children were busy playing. I was busy because I'm older by the knowledge I have. So I continued until uh, primary three. I mean secondary school three. Three. So a teacher felt that I was doing well and adopted me to stay with him. Mm -hmm. And he was a French teacher. So I lived with a French teacher. <laughs> and they told me to speak French. I refused, but I wrote all his papers, 99%. I had only preferred to do uh, physics and chemistry. Wow. I was the class preferred for physics and chemistry. Okay. I didn't like biology because the Indians, the Indian man was speaking from the nose. <laughs> so I didn't understand <laughs> when he calls any name. So I choose not to. So the only course I did not do in my entire secondary school was, was biology. biology. Every other course, up to 14, I did all and I passed all, but our result was eventually seized. Why? Uh, somebody in our class fought the policeman during exam, so they punished us. So I used my art subject to continue with my GCE. Okay. And my A-level, so I did uh, economic statistics and accounting A-level. From there, I moved on to uh, ACCA to start my professional exams. So that's what I was doing using the National Library in Oweri. I don't know if children of these days still remember that mm. National Library. library. Those, that library gave me confidence and I, I, I used it effectively. And then I started learning skills that could help a total family of 14 confessionaries. Mm. We can, I can need 12 bags of floor between 2 a.m. to 5. Back then, or you can still Back do then. that now? <laughs> because, you know, it's a combination effort. <laughs> uh, having to sit down and use my strength as a weightlifter, so mixing mm. a bag of cement um, floor. floor is just like anything, but it's difficult on the, at the beginning because before you accept water, before butter, before mm -hmm. this, before they can mix, you mix them together. There was no mixer. You use hand ah. to do it until from the door you now do fish roll. So when it's, when the season is passing, we move to Vaseline. Okay. When there's no Vaseline, we use we do produce candle. So me and my mother was running a small scale <laughs> uh, industry, uh, industry to keep maintaining the entire family. And because my father was a teller in Nigerian police, he was in general duty. So his salary of 285 Naira is not able to handle all of us. So I'm the first in the family and I need to go out to make sure that I add to what's going on. So I can work for a carpenter to enable us to produce furniture. And instead of paying you produce for me furniture for our house, center table, side drawers. Yeah. And also another mode there is I became a scout trooper. Okay. Organizing all the children of commissioners and all these, bringing discipline. Today it's difficult for you to see children of big men uh, cut grasses on their compound. But mm. as a, a trooper, I was going from house to house, speaking to parents to have their, their children. If you are cop, you join me. If you are full scout, you become. And then you buy things. I come to cut your grasses with your children. And the 
families were so happy with me. Yeah. And then by the time I came to Abuja, met the bigger might, 89, transferred back to the East. And then by 91, I had opened my company, Skill G, working for Schlumberger. Yes. So I started to do construction. Schlumberger housing complexes in Port Harcourt is a turnkey. Mm. In the process, I also met some level of, uh, because as a young boy, my chief engineers tried to run me off the gate with my 12 million naira wow. of those days. So I wept wow. and wrote a petition to Israeli embassy and all my Israeli friends. That took me to Lagos and I became a divisional coordinator later, marketing manager, this is called West Africa. Hmm. So while I was there, I was the first non-engineer to assemble air conditioners in Nigeria. It, uh, it was so costly. Yes. So after the financial, uh, the budget, hmm. the minister read that from now on was knocked down is now 5%. If you import food, you pay more than 75%. So he gave the Dizengoff leverage and we struck. Hmm. And when we struck, I moved the turnover of Dizengoff from 30 million to 150 million and I had 2% for everything I made for them. So money started to come. It was what I was doing. <laughs> HFP started developing VGC. Okay. And they were looking for who has the marketing work to help them move that uh, mostly when the trade fair was coming. So they put Dizengoff as an Israeli company mm -hmm. platform at the trade fair and put HFP. HFP. So I now try to serve the two. Buy this house, I fix air conditioner. Okay, okay. So don't cut, uh, don't cut body. All the generals then, I was convincing them. So when my boss moved to HFP, uh, Mr. Raz, he now took me there to go and I took leave of absence. At this Gulf. <laughs> At this Gulf to come and help. This Gulf has already asked me to open branches in Ghana, Gambia. <laughs> so uh, my life was all about go to different countries, preach about what they can do hmm. to reduce cost of uh, their, their, their luxury items. So I was busy serving two masters. Hmm. Along the line of uh, my job, I got involved with UNDP on their fourth and fifth country program with the National Planning Office. Then things are planned in Nigeria. National Planning Office works with uh, uh, UN agencies to articulate what should be our outlook okay, uh, the, the, the next coming of five to ten years. So that's, I, I, I keyed in there and I was asked to do the uh, program for scale acquisition because I was telling them that I'm multi-talented and that if we let Nigeria continue to drift and the urban migration continue, okay. there will be a time that Lagos should be filled with human beings and nobody else. Hmm. So let's go back to the local government and have skills. So UNDP signed me. I went to 774 local, local government. Yeah, in a whole year, I was running like mad. Uh, today, you cannot drive in the night, but I can uh, leave jobs, for example, by 1 a.m. I'm heading to Medugri. Wow. And then you get to Bombay by the NMPC uh, depot there. There's a park there. We eat, you drink, and the thing will take you off to Numan, to Adamawa, uh, to Song, Song, yeah. You, till you get to where you're going. Where you're going. And by the time you get to Medugri, you meet shy sellers on the road, and then you eat and drink, eat small suya. Yeah. The next morning, you are moving from one point to another. So by the time UNDP saw that somebody could do need assessment for Nigeria, and also, I had to write the books, 42 hands-on training models on different skills. Head, I can do hairdressing. I can do your hair, ma'am. You can? Yes, I wrote a book on it. So from okay. professionalist to carpentry to me, anything, any skill I have produced for United Nations. So that gave me opportunity for them to put a lot of money to that fourth or fifth country program that left behind 500 500 uh, skill centers and 500 local government. Now, Professor Ibe, looking at the kind of childhood you had, 
Would you say it is what has made you who you are today? Has built you for what you are today? Well, uh, I grew up with now, and I belong to my own personal school of thought, that if you want to succeed, you must turn your disadvantage to be your strength. Hmm. Turning your disadvantage to your strength is the only thing you require. Nobody needs to tell you a story about yourself. So if you take it individual, you take it as a corporate organization, tell your story yourself and appreciate yourself and plan for what you want to achieve yourself. So the moment you neglect yourself and the moment you use another person to decide for you, then that is the beginning of your trouble. So first is to realize where you're coming from. And that's exactly how I turn my disadvantage to my strength. Your strength. You are the founder and Chancellor of the Gregory University to Abia State. How did this come about? Um, this question keeps coming and uh, yes, sometimes... Yes, because I mean, I'm wondering... I, I lose out in what I say, but I've been consistent <laughs> to say that my father was a tailor, my mother was a seamstress. Yes. And I hadn't this opportunity of running to education directly. I was picking here, picking there, and keep on and, uh, get, get, getting traction by the day. So my father, I watched him cry for lack of education. Wow. My father became a friend of the British in Kaduna. And as a teller, was mending all the addresses that come from London. So the white men found favor in him. And they took my father to establish Nigerian police tailoring. In Kaduna. Yes. And then they asked him to bring more people to join police. So all the friends of my father, his customers, all their children were moved into Nigerian police force. Sometime in our life, most of the DIGs, most of the AIGs, commissioners of police who came on transfer to Old Imo State will see my father in his usual office at the DC department, and we invite him to see him. So my father would think that I didn't go to school, they want to sack me. Mm. When he gets there, the man tells him, do you remember me? He said, I don't know you, sir. They ask him, were you in Kaduna? He said, yes, sir. You made me Who what I, I am. Today. My father is your friend. You introduced me to Nigerian police. We are many. This one is AIG, this one is this, this one is this. So my father will cry back to the house and say, education mm. is the key of life. That if we see anybody to promote education, we should better get, get it. That he has no money. You can imagine what is behind my mind. I started to work and to make sure I get education. Educated. He's 99 years old now. He's still alive. Yes. Fantastic. He, so the university, he wakes up. He goes out of the university, he sees children milking around. Oh. He goes back to his palace, he said, can you imagine my disadvantageness is, not a, is now being corrected by a new generation, by my family. Oh. And he keep on praying to children, telling them, get education. So this is part of the foundation my father laid. I never knew that this would come our way, never. But working with Brother Vassanjo, and it carrying out all the curriculum review on mathematics and science with my money and all the stakeholders in this country. And then producing instructional materials that can solve each problem that is contained in mathematics and science. And then moved further to uh, develop equipment that, equipment that would, would be used in all the universities in Nigeria. So the only thing left for me I have the equipment, I build the capacity of my fellow brothers and sisters, and I see it work. All the politics in Nigeria are equipped by me. Hmm. Universities are equipped by me. College of education. So I'm making success. But I felt, let me now teach them how this thing could be achieved. Because I can be on the sideline and be a contractor, but I'm not giving yes. back to society. So I decided to say, let me apply and get license and then use my university to show them how it could be done better. So that's exactly what the university represents. So we are licensed to offer three, uh, to run three colleges, and today we have 10 colleges. 10? Yes. 
I'm a professor of entrepreneurship. I, all I do is to create wealth and yes. compute. So I still teach. So what I now do, having taught in many universities, and now this is mine. Once you're in a two in my university, you must pass through me. That oh. is what I carry out as attitude. I change. I change your your thinking and prepare you for the world of work. So before you leave, you have after your theoretical training, your practical training, you must have two skills. So when you graduate, no room for play on white collar job. You are the employer yourself. Be you be the manager of your business. Even if you're a doctor, I want you to learn uh, something, produce your insecticide, produce your happy, um, your disinfectant for your hospital, it saves you money. If you have time to produce and sell to others, the they, better. They, they're better for you now. And then, mm. definitely. Okay. Definitely. Anyway, before we come into that history, yes. because you're obviously a busy man, yet every student that is in the Greg uh, University to passes through you yes. in the second year. Yeah. How do you find time? I am I because we run a complete boarding university. Mm -hmm. Nobody comes from outside. Outside campus. So those outside campus are promoted a lot of vices. But so because we're inside, I do my job in Abuja. Thursdays, Fridays, I go in. I start lecturing. Hmm. And then I take different streams. So I can do lectures Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. And then once you, you announce on the public address system <laughs> through the classroom that lectures is from 7 p.m. to 11, everybody leaves your hostel and come and be in the class. We teach. There's every available, everything is available. Everything is available. So yeah. you teach and everybody will be happy because I call them scholars. Yes. Because they are in the body of knowledge, they are they are helping and contributing to make sure that we succeed. So if you call them students, I they think you are there to they keep on playing the role of students. Student. No, you are a scholar. Join us on the scholarly training. Mm. Everybody shows and everybody up. Everybody keys in. Keys in. So I teach, and uh, uh, you can find out from there what they are doing. So the outcome we are getting from our graduates are doing. We are going to the fifth matriculation. Fantastic. There's so much emphasis on science and technology for you because you have seen what it can do. You've seen the positives. I'm now looking at Nigeria as a nation, looking at our educational system and looking at even where we are, even the common man. We do not seem to place much emphasis on the importance of science and technology. How would you rate us as a, as a nation? Um, we try to achieve a lot, but we, we went backwards. How? But, um, we came with a thinking during President Obasanjo that we need to revamp the study of mathematics and science. We, from revamping, you will not itch into what we call value added. That is when you will not adopt a lot of practical sense to what you are doing. So you can now develop, demystify de the scenarios that the children normally have. For example, NTA started, we are running about, is it not 14, 15 years yes. of NTA trying to promote what they are not supposed to pro uh, promote ab initio. NTA the is to educational run educational television. television, trying to help to do a uh, science exhibition yes, for my country. Cool. And then it's only NTA. It took us almost 12 years to have Minister of Science and Technology, a Minister of Education, come to NTA mm -hmm. ground for it. Yes. it, it this is a, that's why I started to work with NTA. We need to promote. Like NTA has uh, uh, so this final list on some of the exhibitions that are full scholarship at the university. The same boy that we took in NTA exhibition, yes. a small boy from Port Harcourt, is now doing the fuelless generator. He's there. It's NTA product. It's part of the, the promise I made to Nigerians that we're going to give this. Nigeria has gotten it wrong. And then we are trying to see how best we can. President Wachando gave the contract, and then we should revamp science and technology using TVET system to help the laboratories in Nigeria. Um, a few establishments like an NMPC on their corporate responsibility decided to invest money. But after that initial investment, they are not investing any longer. 
in helping institutions that produce engineers for them to prepare for the world of work in this sector. They've run away. So you see, this is what the president will tell you is not possible. You must invest your money. So when you go to OTC and preach that you are doing corporate uh, responsibility and all that you are doing the probably is to share money among people and you think, what invest wisely in developing the youngest of the young to be a great person in mathematics and science, the person will start developing scientifically. So that's why Nigeria is getting stronger. And then a subsequent president, including President Buhari, decided also a few years ago to complete the program of Robert Sanjo to make sure that some three universities are fully equipped in, in their TVET uh, uh, program so that uh, a technical technology education is enhanced. So that uh, when you come for accreditation, the equipment are there, and then you groom the people, the manpower to deliver this to our younger ones. So every president keep on doing, but we want to see a concerted effort. Ted Fund is spending everything he can to make sure that this thing solves, that there's a solution to it. In testing our political will, are you thinking of going into politics, Professor Ibe? <laughs> or are you in politics? I'm, 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 as a political animal, I've uh, supported and worked with politicians. Uh -huh. And like I say, when I see they are not doing the right thing, and they are not adopting the right measures, or they are not working according to the terms and conditions that make things to move, we're drafting ourselves. So I'm already in politics now. You've to, drafted it yes, yourself? myself. So I'm, I'm coming there with best practices. With my friends whom I'm working with, who understands what development is all about. So we're going in, in our various states to go and make this change that is required. I have no other business. No, no child to really go and train, I'm already okay. But the child of uh, my own brothers in, in Gashua, and the one inside Pony, and this one in Ijabu Jesha, and the one in Obomosho village, all of them are so important to me. That, that they must be trained that together. That must be trained together. And that is why I want to go into politics. But I would like to start from the, 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 the point at which openings are available for me. Since I've not been able to carry out my assignment in the political structures of executive or being appointed, mm -hmm. but I have the right to now uh, go and face the election. And my only agenda is I will put the rest of my life to making sure that something is done and it has to be best practiced, backed up, and so that the world can hear our story, uh, not us telling people the world will hear where we're going. You've said so much and um, well I think you should just take your pause here because it's important that we get to meet some of your students, some of your products, people who have passed through you either as your students or as some of your staff yeah. so that we actually hear their own perspective to this. The program is still Executive Discuss. We'll be right back. Doesn't look at you like you're too small for you to talk to him in person, like talk to my secretary or anything. You, you can come to him and share your problems. And if it's what he can do, he'll do it for you at that very instant. So he's a very nice man, he's accommodative. He's a very good role model. Even in the Christian dome, he is the type that gives to the, to the body of Christ. And he like, asks every scholar to come to church to know this God because you, you can't just make academics being excellent, being brilliant, though you still need God to become more successful. The lecturers are great. They make sure they teach to the very core, they break down things for any scholar to understand. And they make you know that um, medicine, to say, is not for just intelligence, it's for the diligence, you understand? So you have to be consistent with your work. He's somebody who I admire his, um, you know, uh, wisdom, his business knowledge, and at the same time, his love for academics. So personally, I was having this vision of growing so far in academics and love for people, that is humanity and love to God. So I think Chancellor has this few uh, values and embodiments that I desire. So in a way, I admire him and see him as a role model. He is just like a father to all of us. He tries to impart knowledge to us. He taught us entrepreneurship in our 200 level or so. Yes, obviously he's a role model. To, like, people look up to him, they want to be like him, they want to achieve things like him. 
He has done so much, not just for the community, for the state too. He's really a nice person. I've met one-on-one -on -one with him before. I talked to him. He talked to me like a father. So he's really a nice person. He's a good role model. He is. He is. Like, I look up to him mostly. I look up to him because after looking after up to my parents and then God, most especially God, then I look up to him. He's a man that has the interest of his students at heart. He's ready to do everything for us. Like, even when we have issues with lecturers or other people that when we were supposed to report to other officials, he even gave us a chance to come to him and do something which other universities don't have the privilege of doing. I've also met him in the chaplains in, uh, in the school church one or two occasions. He's been wonderful, he's been superb. His contributions to the church, contributions to all the churches in the school and the school in general too, he's been superb. I think he's a good person. He's a very hardworking man, hard work pays. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a role model to everyone. Uh, you know, everyone that comes to this school should work hard to get it, to make it in life. A workaholic. A very intelligent person, somebody who, a philanthropist, a man who can make something out of nothing. I think uh, adjective. There, there are so many adjectives to describe, describe Professor Craig. He's somebody who who aspires to the heights and exceeds the height. So taking something from nothing and making it into something. Specifically, talking about George Morgan. This is a very brilliant, up and doing, dynamic, trustworthy, and an intelligent young man. What I would pray to God for him any day is to be able to be given higher responsibilities in this country than he has now because I can vouch for his integrity. He is married to one of the most beautiful women in Niboland. He has a very steady, wonderful family who are always with me and nothing happens in the wife's place and in George's place in Inewi that I will not be there. George Moralu, like I said, is my younger brother. And if I need to sum him up in one sentence, I would say that he's a great soul. Mm. Even coming from me as his sister, he's a wonderful person. Wow, that is that... of the kind of persons you will describe as the people that have the Midas touch. Mm. He positively affects people and things wherever he is. He really is an amazing person. He's a philanthropist through and through. He's someone that, you know, all the time through throughout my growing up, I've seen him not only take care of uh, the family, uh, the direct family, but also the extended family and also a lot of people who he comes in contact with throughout life. Uh, one of his main missions has always been in the fields of science, technology, uh, and mathematics uh, in education, and it's something that he's very passionate about. That he's uh, inspired all his children, and you know, almost anyone that he comes in contact with, to be motivated to pursue these fields. Uh, I am an example of that, being in a house and being very motivated throughout all of this. That I'm, I'm a, a surgeon myself, an orthopedic surgeon by practice. Um, I think that my my father has a very strong belief in that we should all be educated and very strong uh, purpose in life in trying to get as many people to learn and be better. I feel that one of his major goals in life and one of his major passions is simply to make Nigeria a better place uh, for everybody, for all the citizens. Probably the most hardworking person I've ever met in my entire life or known. Um, someone who carries the weight of the world on their shoulders. He doesn't rest. He's always picking calls always helping people, just always lending a helping hand. Well, he's for one, he's God-fearing. <laughs> if his religion doesn't play about that one. And I think people just like to be around him because of when they, are, when they spend time with him, they walk away with knowledge. There's a lot about him. He's a very, very nice person. Um, actually, when I came into this family, because I'm from a polygamous family, 
I came into a tight need family. Um, he speaks he speaks to you he wants to know about you he wants to know your goals he wants to know um, what you want to achieve he's he's very emotional about people's feeling he wants he he likes to help he likes to talk to you he's he's actually a very nice person he's a father figure my husband is a man of the people that's one and actually when he comes back home, he doesn't, there's no difference between the people and the family. So he takes everybody the same way he takes the people outside. And um, he's a wonderful husband. He's a good father. You know, he's a good grandfather. So he's a, a lot of things, actually. He's a lot of things, and it's wonderful and blessed to know him. He's a God-fearing person, that's one. He doesn't joke with that. And I think that's what anyone that really knows who you serve should attach yourself to. So he's, he's God-fearing. He doesn't joke with that. And he's straightforward. He tells you this is what, you know, that's how it is. Wow, everything that we heard from Professor Ibe, his products have also revealed to us. So indeed, this is a man who's filled with so much knowledge and he's still impacting knowledge on the young and upcoming. Back to you, uh, Prof. I also know that um, apart from all that you have done in the area of science and technology, impacting knowledge, you're also a man who is big on philanthropy. <laughs> I'm wondering what it is about you and philanthropy. Um, I have a covenant with Jesus. I ask God to please help me conquer this poverty. Hmm. And that whatever money is going to give to me must benefit mankind. So I have no business in associating myself with any money. I don't even keep any in my pocket. So any money, God knows that I have a problem to solve tomorrow. And he wants to solve that problem through me. He provides money to me. And I will do it. And he only God knows that that money is going to give to me that I'll be selfish with it. He will not give it to me. So because I understood my God, he gives me money for people. God knows that tomorrow he will bring again if we're alive. That's what I do in all the money I have. Anywhere you are, you have a need. If you call me, even if the last one I have in my pocket, we share with you. If I don't have, I'll tell you I don't have. But I'll tell God, these people need help. Help me help with this me money. To help them. Let me help them. So I am lacking nothing because he's the only one that made it possible for the children to succeed. So God, God does these things for me. So he does it for everybody. But I always say that riches might come to you at a young age, middle age, old age, or might not even elude you. But you will not elude your children or children's children. So that you need to walk on the line of our God. The, the, the thing will come to you. Philanthropist is open, scholarships since 1991. Keep on helping. I don't want to see anybody that doesn't have. If I have, we must share. If I don't have, I tell you, I will commit it to God. He will give us money for you to solve a problem. And if you meet me at the time of your God sent you to me so that we work together. That's the what I do now. Wow. That's interesting, and that's um, you know, a very deep perspective to life. In all of us, Professor Gregory Ketruko Ibe is yes. a proud Igbo man. Hey, number one. A proud Igbo man. Yeah. The Enyabia. Yeah. What is this? I of course I know that yes, you ought to be proud of your heritage. Yes. But what is it about the Igbo agenda? If my agenda politically or the way I feel about my people. The way you feel about your people, and then we'll now delve into the Okay, now I am close to Onyo Fife. Hmm. I have a house in Oshobo. So I go to go and see my my Oni. Uh, I go to Benin, I go to see they don't have Benin. I go to uh, Jigawa, I go to see the Mion Duse because my father ended up being the king. Hmm. So I don't know how God did it, but each place I go and they know that I'm a prince, they say, oh, come, 
you have blue blood. I said, I'm not blue, I'm local <laughs> blood. Because God has blessed us to what we are. So I feel proud to be Igbo because they has given me some distinct attitude. When you are being hated, don't run away from it. There's a blessing that goes with it. Don't curse anybody. They said, don't throw stones. He that lives in glass, glass house. house. Don't hate anybody because you couldn't create one. God knew why he made me to be a man, made you to be Yoruba woman, made this and not Anna. If you want to succeed in this world, be proud of that identity. Why didn't God make us to come from Europe? He has all the choice. Would have been a Canadian. I would have been somewhere else. But for the fact that he made us to come from Nigeria, there's something to solve. Mm. One, I have to talk about my community. After my community, I talk about my local government. I talk about my state. The more I move on the ladder, the more I tell you that I'm a complete Nigerian. With residents everywhere. With friendship, relationship across the country. So I meet president of West Africa and Africa. And they, what I talk at that moment as consultant is I'm a Nigerian. They said, you Nigeria, you are so proud. Come and stay in our country. I said, no, I'm a Nigerian. I feel that I owe it a duty to represent my country. So wherever you find me at this level, I represent that, depending on local or international thinking. I used to do, promote Igbo culture. Uh, we call it Igbo True Cultural Carnival. We came the same year that Calabar Carnival okay. started. Okay. My idea was that I don't need to borrow Western civilization thinking in order to show Samba in a Christmas time. So I decided to just do cultural carnival. Culture is life. Mm. So I was promoting just the Nigerian culture, culture. starting from the Igbo. And then before I knew it, I had uh, 16 states coming to Uturu in that my field. Wow. We're under 17 mm -hmm. trained and went to Asia to mm -hmm. win the cup when Iroha was there, yeah. was their, 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 their coach. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine what I do. So I I, I, I can dance any of their song. I will turn Yoruba, I'm free with it. And I have fathers. In fact, my children, my first daughter is... Uh, my second daughter is Kemi. Oh, yeah. So I gave them Yoruba name because wow. they have grandfather. My landlord <laughs> made so much uh, 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 papa onto my children that my children call grandpa and grandma. They come to Nigeria, they are headed mm -hmm. to Lagos to go and see grandpa and grandma. Oh, they, know, they know they have two grandma and grandpa. Huh. But these are Yorubas. So I can't do without them. Mm. And then uh, anything we do, we tell them, look, there's, this person is this, so this one is getting married, or they will say representative that you will see the way they dance, that the child is succeeding, yes, exactly. is becoming this. You'll be wondering, they are not Igbos, but they, they, we found love amongst them. Amongst them. That's why I come and say, Balo of Osho, they are Mafuluku, because I, I grew up in that dungeon and I made life out of it. Wow. Now, Moving on to the Igbo agenda right. politically, I know that um, the Gregory University in Turu um, hosts an Igbo, the war, the war, the war, Igbo summit. Igbo summit, and yes. you've been the university has been hosting since the year twenty fifteen. Yes, uh, what is this about? Well, the, it's coming up again hmm. in December. The when President Buhari entered government, there was a total. Like a party, the Southeast felt there was a dagger to brute behind them. And uh, I woke up with my dear friend, uh, Dr. Ifedo Kwen, and I said, We need to rise up and build one common Nigeria. Hmm. And coming out from the point where the National Confab, I was a consultant to the, the Southeastern delegation. So Jenny Kemachu was leading us. He said, we should call the boss to, to order and start to think about one common Nigeria. And that's how we came with World Summit. 
and to say that Nigeria must move on ahead of any other person. And we must be part and parcel of what happens in Nigeria. If the governors did not come then, it will come tomorrow. And that's how we, we, we brought everybody in one roof. And uh, since that five, six years now, I don't think there's any gathering ever had that Igbo's meet except toward Igbo summit. So we meet there, we discuss, we develop a common front, we invite all of our brothers across the other zones, they come to our plenary and we discuss. People started to feel that we are together, hmm. nothing to run about, you need to protect one another. I, I, all the Arewa people, the Yoruba community, all other tribes in other states, they're always with me. I have awarded scholarship to all of them. So in my school. So if you call them, they tell you, look, let's go back to Ibe and then let's complain about one thing and or the other. Then we address it. I'm not in government, but I do these things because they, they see that I belong to everybody. And I do things that is common to everyone. So just be rest assured that World Ibo Summit will only do what is right for one common goal of Nigeria. But there's this school of thought, especially amongst most Igbos, that the Igbos have been disenfranchised and it's time for them to take up the mantle of leadership in Nigeria. <laughs> but uh, it's obvious. It's obvious. It's not, it's not something anybody wants to argue. And then I learned about it. If you check your NTA program on the 5th of March, I did the keynote address at Charlotte with all the ethnic nationalities on the uh, towards Igbo presidential, uh, Southeast presidential candidate for 2023. And I'm, I'm telling them, look, ownership is important to disenfranchise my people. I was born, I'm a child of Biafra. I suffered no childhood. I want to be alive and somebody from Igbo will become president. And then the president of Igbo extraction has nothing to do with the businessman living in Kara and Amoda or Kano. He just want to hear that my brother, is, they say, is the president. Mm. That president will be working for Nigeria has nothing to do with Igbo man. What are you going to bother yourself? Because the economic space of an Igbo man is, is already uh, with him. So you are not adding or subtracting. Rather, you should add and sub add uh, to the rest of Nigeria. Professor Ibe, you're a man as we've identified, who's very busy. How do you relax? Relax? If you check the YouTube, you see that I sing for my... I'm a reggae artist. Oh, okay. So you'll sing for us, yeah. <laughs> After this discussion, so, you'll sing for us. So, you check the YouTube. Uh, my, ch my children in school, I normally teach them that I'm a DJ too. So, I normally teach them that. It's my father that I'm busy. That's it stop me from being a DJ, playing for you, dancing for you. But I will retire back to go and do what is needful. <laughs> so I, I, I teach you those things. So you, you, you join me, you follow me, I'll mentor you. It has not taken away from my objective. So I, I, the way I relax is uh, dancing, uh, playing music, uh, as a reggae artist. Of course, you know that reggae music is the only music that is telling you the common truth of your background and what your background entails and what your situation can be both now and tomorrow. Mm. That is what somebody like Lucky to pay. You're a man whom we've observed wears white a lot. I mean, the, t the times I've seen you, you're always dressed in white and here you are for this interview dressed in white. What determines your dress sense or influences it? <laughs> Madam, you know, during uh, General Sanaa Bacha's government and having one suit throughout my prime days, spend money on ties and wristwatch, which I don't wear now. One day, Ambrobas came to my house in Mafuluku and then cutted all my wristwatches, <laughs> my belt, all the expensive things I've ever had in my life. Wow and left me and my daughter on the bed. They didn't even wake us up because they must have uh, infused uh, mm -hmm. something that, because they, they just packed everything and left. So this world, we came empty. We have nothing. I don't wear nothing. I don't wear nothing. So I said, wow, 
or suffered. So during San Abacha, they used to buy these Senegalese, and they said the 80,000 Naira there. Back there, yes. And then they give us 800 set. We buy from a lot of uh, suppliers. And then you travel to go and wear it in many places. You met rain, rain will disturb you. You remove your dress, you will see that your singlet is at the red brocade, it's becoming blue or red. So you manage, you will still go to dry cleaner, they will wash. One day I thought I was well dressed and I was in Sudan and I was not knowing that the whole at red brocade is a different color at the back and I was wearing different one at the front, wow. and that was the only dress left for me in Khartoum that day. So that ceremony, I had already a bias mind attending to it. Mm -hmm. And then I went back, and I, I started fighting them. They said, oh God, this Adere. Adere is white. <laughs> dress that they converted to different so, colors. Different colors. So I said, if it is that, why am I busy wearing colored dress? So I said, let me now wear the base cloth. The Which base is cloth white. is white. And I remember when my instinct in uh, uh, Sabbath church, uh, in Judaism, I would only wear white uh, gown. So I said, I return back to white. So it's a base. Even if a white is old, it still remains uh, white. white. For life. Yeah. As we begin to round off this discussion, uh, Professor Ribe, I know that we've talked extensively. Yeah. But when, for, one who has not probably been a part of this discussion from the very beginning. Looking at you with all that you have done, all you've achieved, your background and everything, what is it that drives you to do what you do generally? <laughs> my, you see, I have my confidence with Almighty God is clear. So I, I don't run away from it. He asks me what to do for myself, mankind. So he's a strong motivator inside me. But nobody sees it. And then what also makes me is that the success that we have achieved, if you look at my friends, you see that we are succeeding. It spurs me to action. I look at the students and my scholars, they are succeeding. I move on. I look at ideas that I've created, it's working. I keep on working. Like today, we are doing the best of the Innovation and Research Center found in Nigeria and indeed in West Africa, in Abuja. We are all aspiring leaders with ideas can submit the ideas and is supported by Israeli embassy mm. and uh, the ambassador is so wonderful and uh, I've never seen a, a person like him who feels that uh, the Israeli government should contribute to the development of ideas and this business startup that the Israelis used to succeed so he has promised and uh, signed on that all the ideas will be mentored by Nigerians and different mentors all over the world by March Okay. Those buyers of ideas will arrive at Abuja here in our innovation center, center. in SKG Innovation Center. And then we've made the success. If we make three or four ideas sold to the world, Nigeria, Nigeria is, is on yeah. the world's map and on the world's So the way we succeed in sports, in basketball, we want to now succeed in science. science. You can see the accumulation of what that and I started with President Basset to developing science and technology. See where it's taking us to research and innovation. That is what exactly that pushes me. Thank you very much, Professor Gregory Ikechuku. Thank you. Ibe, OFR. Thank you. A proud Nigerian, no, a proud sure. Igbo man. 100%. And a forward looking individual. It's yes. been a pleasure being with you. On Thank this you very show. much, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have been speaking with Professor Gregory Ikechuku Ibe, OFR, the A of Abia. He is, of course, the founder and chancellor of the Gregory University Utu Abia State. And he is a man who has given back to the society, even though he did not have some of these things when he was growing. He has been able to impact lives and he's still doing that. These are the kind of people that we bring to you week in, week out on Executive Discuss. If you know that you have enjoyed this program, why not join us again same time, same station next week when we'll be unveiling another individual. Remember, Executive Discuss is a program that you can only see on NTA, that's talking about the Nigerian Television Authority and all NTA platforms. Let's do this again same time next week. I remain Ololadi Adiri Bye-bye.